These fire-breathing, majestical, engineering masterpieces are the gems of the internet. This week, I'm counting down the most ridiculous jet engine swaps that will blow your mind and your eardrums. Air cars with plane engines in them. Jet-powered cars! Number 10. I couldn't think of a better way to start off my list than with this jet-powered outhouse coming in at number 10. I know what you're thinking. No, this thing does not run off natural gas and Chipotle burritos. It's got a 750-pound Boeing jet engine good for 1,000 horsepower and a top speed of 72 miles per hour, and that's with no pants on. Two questions. Who built this and why? Well, it was built by Paul Stender. Paul Hot Rod Stender. From Brownsburg, Indiana. Wait, Brownsburg? <laughs> Brownsburg High School football rules. Go poops. <laughs> And it didn't go poop, poop, poop. Anyway, Paul has built a bunch of completely insane jet-powered vehicles that would make you Brownsburg your pants standing next to them, let alone pile anyone down a drag strip. And given inventions are created to solve some sort of everyday problem, I'm gonna let you connect the dots, because I'm about to throw up. Number nine is this tricked out minivan built by Chris Krug. There's something about a modified minivan that makes me fall in love instantly every time I f***ing see one. They're like the unicorns of the car world. Majestic, rarely seen in the wild, and they fart rainbows. But instead of rainbows, this one farts f***ing flames. Big, loud, obnoxious flames thanks to a Rolls-Royce Nimbus helicopter engine that remotely tucks away inside the cabin like you're hallucinating on a desert island. Ask me how I know. Do it. Number eight. Shattering eardrums at number eight is this jet-powered go-kart built by Colin Furs. You can find a bunch of jet-powered go-karts on the internet, but Colin made sure that he built the most ridiculous one out there. The guy is absolutely mental, and you can watch him build this thing from the ground up on his channel. It's legitimately one of my favorites. It's pretty much a limo cart with exhaust pipes that belong in a semi-truck. The jet engine can either run on normal gas or diesel, thanks to some fuel system wizardry which I will probably never understand, and you probably won't either, unless you watch this video. Number 7 Okay, so a jet engine in a tiny go-kart is pretty ridiculous, but this jet-powered smart car coming in at number 7 is even more mind-boggling. Yep, it's street legal because it has its original engine and transmission for easier transport. Sound like the ultimate drag racing sleeper? Maybe if it wasn't for the obnoxiously large jet engine sticking out of the passenger seat. And I have to admit, sitting next to a jet engine doesn't really seem like the best idea. But I can't think of a better way to blast past someone clogging up the fast lane on the highway than by kicking on the afterburners. That's not road rage, that's a civic duty. Number six. Obviously, Paul Stender is back on my list with his notorious fire-breathing school bus blowing the wings off of aircrafts at number six. This thing shoots massive 80-foot flames thanks to an F4 Phantom fighter jet engine, which is crazy because it's one of the only cars on this list that actually uses a fighter jet engine. It makes a mind-blowing equivalent of 42,000 horsepower that can propel the bus up to 367 miles per hour while drinking 150 gallons of fuel along the way. Since the bus was built to entertain people around air shows and a lot of special events around the country, Paul Stender used this opportunity to teach kids to stay away from drugs, which is plastered on the side of the bus. Jets are hot, drugs are not. So take notes, kids. You do not need drugs to go full-blown mental. Number five. My number five pick goes to this sweet little rocket car called the Flatmobile. The Flatmobile. Once the world record holder for the lowest street car up until 2006, it measured in at a height of just 19 inches. If that's not ridiculous enough, according to the creator, Perry Watkins, he got the idea while randomly thinking to himself one day when he was walking around being like, it'd be smart to build a car that looks like a Batmobile, but it's called the Flatmobile. This thing is ridiculously cool and it's street legal. And for the record, I love dad jokes, especially when they take hundreds of man hours to explain. Number four, jokes aside, we're getting serious at number four with the STP Paxton Indy car. Although this isn't the first time that a jet engine was used in a race car, the Silent Sam, as it was nicknamed, was the first turbine-powered race car that actually got close to winning a race. Following the introduction of four-wheel drive into IndyCar, engineer and businessman Andy Granatelli Andy saw the potential of combining that four-wheel drive system with a turbine engine typically used in helicopters. And check out where the engine sits in this thing. Yep, sketchiest place possible. Not gonna lie, that shit don't look safe. But back in the day, sketchy meant fast. The placement actually creates perfect weight balance. 
Long story short, Silent Sam led the race for 171 laps. Oh, and don't forget, he spun out in the beginning of the race. That meant he had to climb his way back up from last to first. That's a comeback of the century run with a ton of money on the line. With only four laps to go, sadly, the engine bearing failed and the car was done. Oh, and mind you, Granatelli was the only dude that whole race that didn't rebuild his engine during qualifying. So he was running the same engine for qualifying and for the actual race. That dominant display of speed and reliability led more teams to adopt turbine technology before being banned outright a couple years later. Number three. I'm starting off my number three with a man who builds some ridiculously brilliant rides, my man Jay Leno and his Helitite EcoJet. Not only is it environmentally friendly because it can run on biodiesel, it's got a custom vegan interior to match. I actually really dig the design. It's created by the General Motors team, so you know it's legit as f it's a really cool blend of modern versus old school. Equipped with a helicopter engine that chugs more air in a few seconds than Pumphrey does on an entire weekend. It's a lot. I'm worried about my friend. And it's fing loud! He's put a lot of work into his car and it's ever evolving, so you can check it out on his channel later on. Number two! Second place is none other than the Shockwave, son. Let's just take a moment to enjoy this insane clip by the channel Next Hero. I mean, go ahead and shoot that guy a sublight comment because it's well deserved. Anyway, case in point, the shockwave needs very little introduction and explanation. The name, the feels, the way your face starts bleeding when you're there in real life. Bring it, bring to extra prove my point, listen to these figures. 12,000 horsepower, 375 miles per hour. Zero to 300 in 11 seconds in a semi truck. I had a serious debate with myself regarding whether this one should be at number one or not. So without further ado, let's see what beat it. And the first place goes to the Thrust SSC, the current land speed record holder since 1997. That's 20 years that this car has been the fastest vehicle on land on earth. And it became the first land vehicle to break the sound speed barrier. Listen to this, 763.035 miles per hour. Oh. Damn! That's a fast motherfucking land car! That's utterly ridiculous, downright dangerous, and extremely complicated. Just like the current situation with North Korea. Political. And that's why it's taking the number one spot. It is mind blowing. Comes with a cute little baby parachute, and looks like something that comes straight out of a sci fi movie. 20 years later, the same team is preparing to shatter that record once again. At least, that's the plan. It's called the Bloodhound SSC, and it's set to achieve, wait for it, 1,000 miles per hour. I think my, I think my nose just started bleeding. Uh, I, I think my nose is bleeding. That's my list, and I'm sticking to it. So tell us about your favorites in the comments. Tell us what we missed. Hit us with a like and subscribe. And a special thanks to all the incredible people out there that are sharing their experiences and amazing creations with the entire internet. Because without you guys, this show would not be possible. So check it, check the description down below. I encourage you to follow those dudes, watch their stuff, you know, keep it cool, keep it happy, keep it chill, keep it real, you know. Support them, support the community. We're all car boys. Some of us are car girls. I love you. Disagree with me? I'll see you guys in the comments. Donut is a gang. We got a ton of new shows coming out. Every Monday, we got Wheelhouse with Nolan. Every Tuesday, we got Matt Field showing us how he's building his crazy Corvette Drifter for the next Formula Drift season. Every Wednesday, we got Science Garage with my man Bart. He's like Bill Nye for cars. Thursday, you know what Thursday is. Friday, me. Tony and the Jets.